Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, and I would like to start this video off by thanking you all um, for uh, getting us over the 20,000 subscriber count. Uh, so we were just underneath, uh, and I asked you to share and subscribe and do all that good stuff. Uh, and the uh, that video uh, a week ago actually is sitting at about 30,000 views now. Uh, so your uh, your hard work has paid off, and I thank you for that. Uh, so today we're going to give you an update on the uh, the ponies, uh, what's happening there. Uh, we had and have some more animals that will be leaving the farm, uh, and we're going to talk about why we uh, rehome our animals and why it's important in our mission to help other animals moving forward. So concerning last week's video, I'll put up a little shot here of my stats. Uh, you can see how that line climbs up and that little gray line at the bottom is the normal video views that I would generally receive uh, in that same period. Uh, so again, thank you. I'm out here with the, uh, the animals. So <laughs> this little girl has been, uh, uh, she was reunited with her, her dad last week. Uh, of course, we sent her mom and her aunt, uh, Shadow and Willow, uh, to uh, a farm for training uh, and you have been asking so you've been asking when are they coming back and I can't wait to see them uh, again uh, if all goes well they will actually not be coming back to our farm um, you know you make bonds with the uh, the animals and the ponies and uh, uh, you hate to see them go but it's a necessity uh, because what happens is um, we, if we keep a lot of animals on the farm, uh, we can't bring in any more. Uh, and that's something that kind of hit home, oh, it was back in October. Uh, we had contact, we had been contacted by our municipality, uh, for you uh, Americans, that would be a county, I guess, a county office. Uh, and the municipality uh, told us that somebody had complained that we had too many animals. Uh, now we're not, I, <laughs> we're not entirely sure who it was. Um, you know, everybody in this general area is pretty happy with what we do. Um, but uh, there's a, a few different scenarios out there. Anyway, they came out to our farm and they did an inventory and said that we were over. Uh, so the way they do that inventory is they measure in animal units. So depending on the size of your property, uh, you're allowed only so many animal units. Uh, and what an animal unit is, is it's basically, it pertains to their waste. Uh, so for example, a sheep uh, gives 0.1 animal waste. Uh, a, a cow, I believe, is one animal unit. And a horse, a full-size horse, is about uh, 0.5. Uh, these ponies here, of course, are smaller, so they have a, I think it's a 0.38 animal unit. Um, so we have to maintain that. We were over by a little bit. Um, we've, you know, in, in having animals come in and having animals go, uh, we fluctuate quite a bit in there. Uh, so we do have to maintain that, uh, or there are um, problems that we can run into. Uh, so um, getting into these guys, um, Meadow here and Levi, so the, they uh, they got together for the first time last week, uh, and it was I was a little bit sad because her mom and Shadow had left, um, so of course they are herd animals and she needed somebody. Uh, so when we brought Levi in, they had run, run, run. Uh, now in last week's video, you'll see Daisy. Uh, she was right in there, and all three of them were running. Uh, well, da Daisy's a little older. She's a little overweight. Her feet, uh, she were working on her feet, those problems. Uh, so we knew that she wasn't going to maintain. Uh, so these two, <laughs> hi, <laughs> these two, okay, yes, I know, I love you too. <laughs> uh, these two are younger and um, they have lots of energy uh, and they were seen quite a bit running out in the backfield all week long.
so they're extremely interactive as you can see here. Uh, so um, I will be posting some pictures. Actually, I'll throw some pictures maybe uh, at the end of this video here. Hi. As to uh, as to Shadow and Willow's progress, uh, and of course you can go over to TNT Farms on their Facebook page. Uh, and again, I'll put a link down in the description on that. So of the four ponies that came in, Roxy is one that is uh, remaining here because she is pregnant, and she will be. Uh, she will be having a little one uh, come this spring, so we'll be keeping an eye on her. Uh, we still have to work on her burrs. Uh, some of you have been asking or uh, and, and even commenting about how to do that. Um, we find that uh, baby oil works really well in pulling those out. Uh, we just have to harness her up, and it's been so cold lately uh, that we just haven't been able to get in there and work with her. Uh, so hopefully this coming week, it's supposed to be warming up and we will uh, we will get her taken care of. You guys are right in here. This is what's great about these guys is they're very interactive. We are open to the public during the summertime uh, and these guys I think are going to be uh, following everybody around. Now something that happened in the last video uh, was Little Meadow here. Uh, she was lipping the air when these two got together. Uh, so it's actually called uh, full champing. And what it means is she's basically telling Levi that she's just a baby and she is being submissive. So she wants to be friends. Uh, she is not a threat. Uh, so that's what that was about. Uh, she hasn't done it since. It's kind of an introductory thing. Uh, usually it happens in um, foals that are, you know, yearlings, a year old. It can happen in older ones, uh, up to a couple years old, uh, but generally it's, uh, it's the younger ones and it's their way of communicating. Uh, so that's what that was all about. What do you got there, Levi? Did somebody leave that down? That was probably hanging up. Do you want to get harnessed? You guys are funny. <laughs> are you cleaning up the yard, buddy? <laughs> We're going to take that and put that in. Yes. Hi, Shanzi. You're out. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's warming up. Uh, so changes we're going to be making this summer to look at these these guys are just following me <laughs> uh, You guys are funny uh, changes. We're going to be making to this building here uh, as we move forward We're uh, living and learning uh, so these panels here uh, are the whole idea was to open them up and close them uh, But what we've decided to do now is just to remove all these panels for summer uh, and then in the winter time we're going to put poly across there so six mil uh, construction poly uh, across that because the duck and rabbit building over there uh, is actually quite warm because of the poly so because that sun's out there's daisy <laughs> um, so it's actually fairly cool when you walk in here uh, so something else we'll be doing is the bottom section on the inside we're going to be putting uh, paneling along the inside to keep any drafts out uh, and then, of course, inside the building, we have this open, uh, but there is the section over there where Roxy's coming in. Uh, now, you can get a little bit of pass-through. You can also see the light that's kind of coming through here. It's not too much of a concern on the top, but definitely on the bottom, you can get wind coming in through here. Uh, so, Marley's here. We've got the alpaca. Everybody's basically inside here uh, eating. Tara had come out and given them uh, hay just a little while ago. And of course the pigs are probably sleeping. Petey and Piper. I imagine they're somewhere. Oh, you know, I can see some, some hay raising up right over in that area there. So <laughs> they're nestled in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> what do you think, Turbo? Hey? How did you get in there? Okay, well that is just very str Are you locked in there, buddy? There's a small hole here for the pigs to go through. Uh, and this is boarded up over here. So, how did you get... <laughs> I wish they could talk. <laughs> uh, communicate. Okay, well, we're going to have to get you out of there somehow. I guess we're going to have to uh, open up one of those boards. All right, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> shortly. Uh, he's like, oh, there's hay over there. People are eating and I'm locked in the stall here. Uh, silly, silly. Uh, okay, so Bronwyn, Bronwyn's horns do wrap around and what we're going to have to do is uh, trim those. So I did pick up a, um, 
a saw. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but they go right into her cheek. So they're not quite making contact with the skin, but they are making contact with her hair. Uh, so again, once it warms up a little bit more, we're going to be taking care of that. We're going to take off uh, probably an inch on each side of the horn. So we'll be sure to, uh, to record that as well. Uh, we have uh, Tinker here and Coco, and it looks like Lambert's over over on that side there. All right, guys. Well, uh, enjoy your uh, your breakfast, your brunch, and uh, we're gonna go inside and see the other ones. Oh, buddy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll work on you. I was think I was thinking about removing. Just taking the board off, probably on your left there, uh, on that side because it's less tied in. So I don't know. I don't know how long. I don't know how long he's been in. But he can't get out. Well, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I doesn't don't think he can get out. He could. He could jump over, but. <laughs> Well, there's two on this side. Yeah, but there's four here, so it's not going to tilt. Oh, it's not going to tilt. That's true. <laughs> what about the little door? Is there a the plywood that's on there? Would that be easier? Purple, get out! <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to pull uh, pull the camera footage and find out find out how exactly he got in there. <laughs> he probably ran, and they 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 were scurrying, and he probably jumped over. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, morning. I mean, the thing is, it's got to come down. Look at the steam come out of there. Oh, so it's just gonna keep going. <laughs> You can see how much uh, pigs generate. You know, you know. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Just disturbing them. <laughs> All right, there we go. They should be. He put it. Push it down. Okay. Turbo. Oh, <laughs> he's... He gets out. oh no way! Really? No! Really? No! Knew he could get out. You? I knew he, could get out. he was just messing with us. It's all that wool. They're actually pretty, uh, pretty slim. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay. Well, see, we woke up the pig. Got everybody excited. He just had to paw. I knew he, could get out. he just had to paw at the ground and and make a run for it. <laughs> All right. Stay puff marshmallow out of a. Yeah, <laughs> stay puff marshmallow man. <laughs> uh, okay, coming into here, we did get uh, a little rabbit here. So this is a little female rabbit, and she came in the other day. So she is fixed. Uh, now she was uh, inside, so we didn't want to put her, well, for isolation purposes, we want to keep her isolated for a little bit. But she was uh, a house pet, so I'm sure there's uh, there's no concerns. We have some history on her. Uh, but we don't want to put her out in the cold uh, just yet, so we're going to leave her in here until it warms up. Uh, so, uh, in here we had the uh, last two of the seven pigs that came in and they actually left this morning. Uh, so they went to a farm, uh, the same farm that Clyde went to. Clyde was the stud that was in here, one of the four that came in. Uh, so Clyde is doing very well. Uh, he is over at the other farm. Now he's away from all of those hormones from the other horses and he's not as excited. Uh, he has calmed down considerably, uh, which from that video you'll see when Tiana harnessed him up, uh, he was actually uh, pretty good. He walked very well uh, and he's doing well over, the over at that other farm. Uh, so he is getting uh, gelded over there, 
uh, and then the two horses, the two boys, which we finally figured out uh, they were uh, they were boys uh, that went with Shadow and Willow off to uh, the other farm, TNT Farms. Uh, they will also be fixed over there, and then we'll figure out some kind of payment method to get uh, get them taken care of. Uh, so uh, we do fundraisers. So speaking of uh, of that, we do fundraisers in the summertime. We are opened up uh, to the public uh, from basically Easter until Halloween, uh, and then of course we have things like goat yoga. Uh, people can come and they can enjoy goat yoga or farm yoga, really, because we have alpaca in there. We got the sheep. We do have the goats in there, uh, and sometimes the pigs make it in there. Uh, not always. Uh, so that helps out in the fundraiser. And uh, also uh, Teespring. So we do have merchandise and I just noticed that there is a code for Valentine's weekend. Uh, so it's called Love Sick is the, um, and I'll put that uh, down here and the link is down in the description and at the end of the video. So if you are looking at getting any merchandise, uh, there is a 10% code that you can key in uh, when you complete that order. And that is uh, done on the 17th, which is tomorrow at midnight. Uh, Pacific time, I believe it is. So, if you're uh, looking at get any, getting any merch, uh, head on over there. Uh, now, coming into these guys in here, so we've got these Muscovies. Uh, they've been inside all winter, and of course Muscovies can't handle the cold weather uh, that we have here in Manitoba. Uh, so, they are in with the chickens, and so is Fernando. Hey bud, you're itching to get outside soon as well and meet all of those visitors. <laughs> Uh, so they're doing excellent here. We have the little ones. Everybody wants to get outside, don't they, Sheldon? Yes, everybody wants out. Uh, Holly and Billie Jean here. And then, of course, little Hazel over there. Um, George and um, Moira. Hi, Moira. How are you doing? Are you getting better with people? We'll fix that this summer. Get some more interaction with her. Uh, she's a Shetland sheep. And uh, these guys are Canadian or Arcot sheep. Uh, and then, of course, Bronwyn, which is the one with the horns out there that we're going to trim. Uh, she is a Dorper cross, so she's actually a haired sheep. Uh, so she doesn't need to be sheared like these guys. And speaking of shearing, we will be doing another shearing uh, video come spring, which will likely be end of May, beginning of June when it warms up. Uh, we will also be releasing the guineas into the yard. Uh, they eat wood ticks, they're pretty loud, um, but um, you know, it's a trade-off for what they do with the wood ticks. So I haven't had a wood tick here on yard for four years, I think it is. So they do a really good job of that. Uh, these guys here, which were brought in, I think we're babysitting these guys. I'm not quite sure if they are going back to the other farm. There were a few farms that had uh, some fires, and um, we've got this, uh, We've got the rooster and the hens in here. So these are Colombian rocks. And a little atlas. <laughs> the Sarama rooster. Uh, and then in this area, so some people have asked about where are the pigeons at? Uh, so we do have some pigeons down in here. Uh, there's a few of them in this area. Most of them are outside now. Uh, we've got the, uh, the two peahens and of course Prince the Peacock. And he's getting pretty old now. So hes we've had him for quite a few years. Uh, but he's doing good. Uh, so the pigeons. So the pigeons are outside. Uh, we released them out. You know, we had them in this cage. They were getting too overpopulated. We were stealing the eggs, um, feeding them to the pigs, or just getting rid of them uh, because they were just breeding so fast. Uh, so we decided to put them out into the yard. Uh, and it's very nice to see them out there flying around the yard uh, free, free as a bird. Uh, so that's, uh, that's exciting. And they do stick in the area. They do stay in the area. Uh, so it's not like they take off and, and fly away. Um, so that's the story with pigeons. Well, we got a couple out enjoying the sun. Hi, girls. <laughs> so our girl run, this is our outside girl run here. We've got tubes and different things uh, to go into and to go under. Uh, and then, of course, they've got their little door right down in there. So, the ducks and the geese. 
So this area here is going to definitely be need to be cleaned out, which will be done, well, hopefully in the next uh, coming weeks when things warm up. Uh, we're going to get these guys back outside, which I'm sure they're itching to do. Uh, the geese aren't quite as white as they were when they came in, uh, but when that uh, pond melts, uh, they'll be loving it out there. Uh, so we've got some pigeons up in here as well. Uh, they've made their way up in here. Um, and this is an area that I mentioned in a previous video that we want to expand a little bit. Uh, although some of these uh, ducks that we have, we are looking after over the winter time. Uh, and we may be uh, rehoming a couple of these check geese here as well. Uh, so that's the story with those guys. Uh, the rabbits, the inside area here, so they've got their food. Uh, and we've sometimes got a, uh, a rooster in here every so often. Look, it's Tara. You've still got this board here? Is this just in case the, just in case the boys decide to get out of the electric fence over there? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if it'll do. I don't know if it'll do too they much. They haven't gotten out once. All right. All right. So what are you doing here? <laughs> Flower. Um, <laughs> just reloading. It's a nice day. I'm outside. Well, it's not. It's still cold. Um, yeah. So we get these in these bags here, <laughs> and of course these are the containers that uh, so that we use to nice, feed the animals. When it's nice, we fill up these so that on the cold days it's quick and easy. And you're not hauling every day. So what, I've already hauled like 10 bags, just filling up the wheat. And, yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's the wheat there. And then this over here is barley. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, mixed bag, so. yeah, so that's our, uh, our feed that we give to uh, the ducks, the geese, the chickens. Uh, we give some to the rabbits too, but the rabbits also have their alfalfa mix. Uh, the rabbit food. How are the boys doing? Hi, Billy. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> the donkeys I see are still in the building. Uh, so these two donkeys, so there has been uh, a, a couple that, uh, was it a family or just a couple? A couple, young yeah. couple moving out to the country, a lot of property. And they are looking for miniature donkeys. So they have said for sure? Yeah, so uh, probably in March, I think it is, yeah, you said? Yeah, they haven't moved out yet. Yeah, so they've got to get out to the property, and their property is established already, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the donkeys will be heading out, uh, and that's going to put us uh, just underneath our, um, our animal waste unit. Well, and uh, it'll be a great partnership. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. So... Yeah, and then in the future, this is something that I want to start doing, is I want to um, go to these other farms uh, and then visit the animals that have been here and then kind of share that with you. Uh, so some of you had asked about visiting other farms, uh, and that's something that uh, we want to start doing in the future. So something that happened yesterday was we had our annual seed swap. Uh, and this one's a little bit different because we are uh, doing multiple months. So Tara wants to have it for the next few months. Uh, and what it is, is just uh, for everybody to get together, uh, you know, have some coffee, have some tea, uh, and then go through and swap seeds or buy seeds for a dollar a, a little package. Uh, and it's just that communication between people uh, that we like to encourage. Uh, for people who don't know or are just getting started or haven't done certain plants and are looking for more information. Uh, so it's kind of a good meet and greet and share information on that. Uh, so that was an exciting uh, day. Tara is uh, so excited for her seed swap. And I usually season, hear that. <laughs> through the season, we will talk like, first one will be seed swap, but then we'll talk plant swaps and how your garden's going and what bugs are bugging you and just so that we all have support growing our gardens the best we can. Yeah, so the next seed swap will actually be kind of a seedling swap, uh, a plant swap, uh, where people have taken that and have started their uh, their plants, uh, growing them, and maybe brought some back to, uh, to swap out with others. Uh, so it's all about community, which is what we try to uh, to share, uh, we try to share with our community information, uh, knowledge, whatever we can, uh, which is another reason why we make these videos. 
So that is it for another video. Uh, again, I thank you all for sharing, liking, and subscribing. Uh, at this rate, by summertime, I'll have 30,000 subscribers, so that's pretty exciting. Um, if you have any content that you're uh, interested in seeing, uh, I am going to be doing a, a video on how to choose an electric fence charger. Now, I have done uh, an electric fence installation, the wiring, uh, last summer, and that was actually a pretty big hit, and people are still watching that quite a bit now. Uh, so I will be doing that, going over um, where you are, uh, what type of predators are in your area, what type of animals you're planning on having, uh, because all of that works out uh, into the calculation to figure out what type of fence charger. Are you looking for a solar one? Uh, do you have power there that you can plug into? Uh, so a lot of good information on that. Uh, and if there's anything else that you're uh, interested in, uh, please leave it down below in the comments. Uh, so until next time, uh, I again thank you for watching and we'll see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>